This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 192 of Horsemanship Radio, brought to you by Hands on Gloves. Horsemanship Radio is a part of the family of the Horse Radio Network. And today we have some rock stars. Again, for most of them these days are congregating at Equitana. This is Debbie Lauks, and you're listening to the Horsemanship Radio. Thanks for joining us. Horsemanship Radio airs on the 1st and the 15th of the month, and I have my producer, Jen, with me today. I had Glenn last time. How are you? Greetings, Debbie. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm I'm sorry we lost you for a time, but we um, got Glenn in here, and it's about time we put him to work. Well, you know, he needs to check in with (laughs) with Team Lauks every so often. Yeah, it was pretty fun. We got to talk to Megan Markowitz with uh, Equitana and in in her worst moments, poor thing, you know, it's like weeks before Equitana. Can you imagine the stress? Oh, I can't. I can't imagine the details and not sleeping at all. (laughs) (laughs) Well, all of our guests, well, no, not all of our guests, lots of our guests today will be at Equitana. So why Uh don't we start this out with when and where is Equitana? Ah, where is so fun. It's in Kentucky this year. I'm really glad that they went to the horse park, the Kentucky horse park, which is iconic. And because where else are you going to have the most fun with horses? So when, when does it happen? October 1 through 3, October 1, 2, 3. And that's 2021. If you're listening to this in the future, it happened already. So go look at the website, but we're going to have Nick Roldan, um, who is an iconic polo players legend. And um, Monty is stepping in there because he went to Equitana several times over the years. I think Equitana started in the seventies, actually in Germany and Essen, I believe it might've been the first place. Uh, but dad's been there several times and loves it. I think it was established in Europe in 72. Anyway, that was my notes. And um, when dad went there in 2019, we we brought this up, he rode there. So they have so many horses. It's ginormous. Really pleased to have some people talking about what they're going to do at Equitana on the show. So, um, and then we've got Louise from UK. So she, cute. She's going to be a fun one to, to hear. She's a, a bright, young, articulate entrepreneur who is taking her passion for horses and combining it with some really good science. So that's yeah. going to be a fun one. Yeah. So we're going to do that. We're going to hear from the whole, the, the trio uh, next. But first we need to hear from our title sponsor because without our title sponsor, we wouldn't be here. Hands on gloves. Hi, I'm Monty Roberts. And am I excited to bring you the news of a revolutionary, new, all-in-one, shedding, bathing, grooming tool. Hands-on gloves. They are fantastic. And you believe me, I've tried them all. Hands-on outperforms traditional curry combs, shedding blades, metal bristles, and all those things. Most animals will gravitate to you for more grooming and petting time. If you wear them, your animals will love you more for it. While using the hands-on gloves, you can easily handle water hoses, shampoo bottles, lead ropes, leashes, and anything you want with them on your hands. They are easy to clean, and they massage muscles and stimulate circulation while helping to distribute natural oils for a healthy skin and coat. Hands-on is changing the way we bathe, de-shed, and groom our animals forever. Hands-on gloves. They are fantastic. Dr. Jason Worsland is the founder and chief wellness officer at TheraBody. After a motorcycle accident, Dr. Jason searched for a solution to relieve his debilitating pain. Rejecting the options of prescription drugs or surgery, he designed a makeshift device out of a power tool to ease his discomfort. That invention became the category-defining percussive therapy device, Theragun. Therabody, his company, offers wellness solutions that help people perform better, recover faster, and manage pain as an alternative to traditional medicine, as he believes everyone should have access to cutting-edge therapies that enhance the body's natural abilities to perform, recover, and achieve wellness. 
And with him, we'll have leading American polo player Nick Roldan. He has a passion not only for his sport of polo and the horses in it, but also working together with the equestrian world as a whole and collectively promoting it. Having long followed Equitana, originally established in Europe in 1972, Nick was all too aware of its reputation and possibilities that it offers to polo. And so he jumped at the chance to be a part of the inaugural Equitana USA, taking place in Lexington and Kentucky's Horse Park between the 1st and 3rd of October 2021. Equitana USA is the premier North American forum that promotes the exchange of ideas, information, and experiences to enhance the horse and the equine industry, all while providing a high quality event for those with a passion for horses. Well, welcome. We've got the party line going on. This is the, uh, I think this is the road trip to Equitana here. And I love it because we've got Nick Roldan, our Polo player extraordinaire. We've got Monty on the line, and we've got a newbie, Dr. Jason, to Horsemanship Radio. So, first, I wanted to say hi to Nick. Nick and Monty haven't had a chance to chat for a little while. So, both of you two say hi. Monty first. Hello. How are you doing, Nick? Monty, how are you? Great to hear your voice. How everything is good. How are you doing? Okay. What have you been doing over here? Uh, what haven't we been doing? Um, it's been uh, it's been a really hectic summer, to be honest. Um, have a lot going on, uh, obviously bet- between polo and, and that now trying to get uh, everything ready for Equitana. Um, building, I'm trying, you know, building a brand. You know, trying to make sure the horses are all sound and happy. Yeah. Uh, trying to play, you know, proper polo and trying to compete at the top level. So yeah, there's a lot going on, Monty. So I, I can't complain. <laughs> wow. So. Uh, I haven't been that busy, but um, <laughs> my word, it's good to hear from you. And I haven't heard from you in a while, but it's great to hear that you're continuing to be a factor in this industry of ours. Yeah, it's look, it's, you know, as as you know, you know, obviously working with you and Debbie was was a, was a huge honor and, 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 and the passion and love you have for the sport and for your questions has been incredible. So I'm, uh, you know, I, I share that same passion. That's, I think, why we obviously have always got along so well. So, but, um, but I'm, I'm continuing to pursue it, really trying to promote polo, trying to promote the, um, you know, OTTBs, the horses, the sport itself. Now we're dipping into uh, sort of the training aspect of the sport, both with the, with 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 uh, the athlete itself, and 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 now I I got was very lucky to meet uh, an incredible guy, Jason, who's on the call. Um, who is the creator and co-founder of um, um, of Therabody, which is an incredible brand and an incredible product um, that has to do a lot with with recovery of the athlete. So, um, again, you know, a lot going on, a lot of good stuff. You know, Equitana is going to be a great yeah. opportunity and a great platform to promote the sport, to promote my brand, promote World Dan Lifestyle, um, and to and, and to and, and excited to really showcase uh, Therabody, which is uh, an incredible brand, which I'm sure Jason will fill you all in a, a little bit more as, as we continue. Yeah, we're going to well, ask him about that. It, Go ahead, Dad. Well, it's so great to, you know, Nick, when you stop and think about it and take a broad view of the world right now, horsemen and horsemanship and the horses themselves have suddenly become one of the most healthy things going on on earth. Um, There's so many problems and everything, and yet the horse industry is improving and people are becoming more aware of the fact that they can take care of horses without violence and that things can move forward. Um, Something like we've never seen before on the face of this earth. There was a time when horses were just a pack animal, you know, and it's people like you, Nick, that have really helped us get this thing going the way it is. And, um, her majesty pushing for us globally is, is a big, uh, help too. But, um, I'm going to go off now and let you guys visit, but it's great to hear from you again and hope to hear from you again soon. Yeah, I I agree, Monty. I mean, you know, it's, it's a proven fact that the, 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 the effect that horses has on 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 humans and 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 on you know um there's, you know there's a bunch of different scenarios but but anyways great great to speak to you great to hear your voice it sounds like you're doing good as always you know and um 
and uh, yeah, so and ho- hope to hopefully be able to see you in person, you know, sooner than later. Yeah. Thank you very kindly, Debbie. Thanks. You carry on. Okay. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, I wish we could be at Equitana. It was. Um, I know. Yeah, it was a uh, fall of 2019. So we're as we sit here, it's the fall of 2021. So Dad was at Equitana and Essen riding. They had him riding. He was four or five days um, on that big screen wow. and everything. And so yeah, so we've interviewed some of the the ladies that are running Equitana this year, and they really aspire to be as big as Essen sometimes. So I'm I'm really glad that they're pulling it off. I guess it was what we say these days during COVID that you're able to pull something off these days is is pretty darn exciting but i you know i want to thank both of you two uh both jason and nick here for making that commitment to go to equiton i'm sure that they thank you constantly but we'll get into a little bit about equitana with nick later and your schedule but i wanted to stop start with dr jason because your your two relationship has led to us meeting Dr. Jason here. Do I call you Dr. Jason? Everybody else has been. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dr. J or Dr. Jason. That's what you, people usually call me. Okay. Well, Dr. J, those are big shoes to fill. I'll call you Dr. Uh, Dr. Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> tell me about it. Um, but I, <laughs> I, love, I love that you two have, have gotten together. I love your passion, Dr. Dr. Jason, of the the whole Therabody story, and I had a couple of questions about that, and I'll just kind of bring Nick into that when it when I need to interpret for for that. But um, <laughs> I mean, being around horses pain free helps people with uh, all these things we talk about. Nick will understand this: breathing, um, fluidity of mm-hmm. movement, you know, focus, or or some people call it mindfulness with horses. Dad always says that without that it's really hard to be with your horse to really, to really work with your horse in a way that, um, you know, you can kind of partner together because if you're pain, you know, you're not pain free, you're moving funny, your breathing becomes shallower. Um, you know, you don't have that fluidity of movement. So I, I wanted you to share if you could a little bit about how we can help our bodies achieve a little more pain free state because that's your business. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, I can't tell you how honored I am to do this. I mean, Monty and Nick are legends and I'm humbled to be on the call with them. And secondly, you know, we all have aches and pains. We all have our things. And, you know, I told Nick this, I grew up around horses. We had a farm as Western and, and I, you know, my uncle got fucked off. I mean, the things that happen from a horse and a lot of times in that culture, they don't necessarily go get it fixed. They don't, you know, Mm -hmm. it's an interesting way of saying that when I, the reason Theragun was started, the reason I started Theragun is I was in a motorcycle accident Mm -hmm. in 2007. Now I'm a chiropractor in Los Angeles doing my thing. Suddenly I became a patient. I couldn't move. I couldn't work. My neck was at a nine millimeter bulge and it was really causing a lot of problems in my body. Number one was pain. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for something to get me out of pain. Mm-hmm. something that I could use on myself when I wasn't at my clinic and there wasn't anything. I started using something that vibrated and I started realizing what it could do for my body. And the mm-hmm. vibration was easy for my body to accommodate to because I was in so much pain, meaning it would, it wouldn't really be effective, but it would work for a little bit. And I, so I got a taste of what that might be. And then I thought, you know what, what if I had something stronger? I created the very first Theragun in January of 2008 Okay. And I started using it on myself just to keep me out of pain and keep me moving. Yeah. And between my visits at my, at my own clinic, fast forward, you know, I got better in Jan- in July of that year. Literally I was back to practice, mm-hmm. started using it on a patient. Life takes off eight years later, five different versions. <laughs> I've now got this thing spread around the world, different soccer clubs and, and, and people are now starting to understand what this does for them. And I'll kind of finish with this part. When you use our products on your body, mm-hmm. it affects your nervous system. Mm, okay. And if you, like you said, if we're not in a peaceful place when we're working around these animals, they sense that. Mm-hmm. And, and whether or not they're sympathetic, empathetic, like those are things they sense. I think being whole and mindful about your own self and your own body mm-hmm. will only draw your connection with your animal much stronger. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't think we spend enough time doing that. Mm-hmm. No, and yeah. and I, 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 it's very interesting that you say that we don't address that because isn't that the cowboy way? Uh, whether you're, you know, from mm-hmm. Argentina or whether you're from Florida or whether you're from California, it, it is like us to to go to work with a little pain here and there. You know, you pull the bail up a little too quick and all those things too. So Nick, you've um, you've got to live with some pain. You probably come off a few times and uh, and and you could just be sore just sore from doing those amazing moves that you make on top of a horse it's, during it's, polo it's, not, it's obviously about like you know obviously being sore after games even before games practices i mean we're in high demand we're constantly training um both in the, in the gym and on horses so you know it's inevitable that you're gonna we're gonna be sore and um and when I met Jason, you know, at Miami Beach Polo about um, a year ago, or not even like six months ago, um, we we hit it off right off the bat just because I loved his passion and his energy and his beliefs um, that he created with Therabody. And uh, I mean, we shared the same passion, so it's been, you know, it's been it's been an ing- incredible relationship. And uh, he's done so much, and I think there's just so much more that we can do for for my sport and for sports in general than for just a general human being. Yeah, his yeah. We've got to be healthy first, and then then we get our horses healthy. Um, I and I yeah. love I love this whole idea of percussive therapy. It's almost like you quantified something that we kind of do to ourselves anyway when we pound on ourselves, <laughs> Doctor J. Yeah. I just pounded on my back and yeah. made my voice funny, but um, yeah. So, wh- what is percussive therapy? So it's it's the rapid movement of something that has a larger amplitude on your body. Um, just to give you an idea, the, the word percussive therapy originated back in the early 1900s when they were um, treating children that had cystic fibrosis. Uh, so they'd have that disease of the lungs and they would lay them on the side and cup their hands and just hit the, the child, not, not you know hard, but just causing heat between their hand and the ribs. Okay. And then they, it, would cause, it would break the, the mucus up so that their coughs were more productive. Okay. So that's kind of where it came from. So you kind of think about a big slap and then you think of the percussion instruments in, in a band, how they just, they kind of hit together mm-hmm. percussive therapy on the body with a certain frequency becomes a neuromuscular treatment device. that actually affects our nervous system. And that was what I discovered through this process. Um, so so percussive therapy is, is it increases blood flow. What it does to the body is it increases blood flow it releases tension and it overrides any sort of pain you may be having along as it's not like, you know, a broken arm or something. Sure. It overrides any sort of pains or aches you may have. So gotcha. the fact that I just said that, that's perfect for every body, like Nick said. But yeah. then you think about, to your point, the mentality of horsemen and, and equestrian, they, they, they don't really take care of themselves. They don't hold their bodies at the same <laughs> level that they do their horses horses yeah exactly exactly uh, you're a fit guy people should go on your website and, and you know check it out and read all the all about Jason's it Jason's extremely fit isn't he like he's, he's like <laughs> yeah. one of those guys okay so i mean you're yep. not just a, a doctor in a, in a row but i love that you created this out of your knowledge of not only the human body but your need for relief from your pain is this motorcycle accident you, you know that crazy dancing guy a lot of people have seen the crazy dancing guy and that's the guy who goes to a concert stands up and starts doing the crazy dance but it's it's that trend that happens when the second person stands up and starts dancing with the crazy dancing guy right so who for you was the first <laughs> adopter right you know that who was the first one yeah. who said that little crazy but maybe i'll try is it nick great question i could yeah, no. I mean, thank God it, wasn't. <laughs> it was long before that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, look, the early days, it was so barbaric. It was literally a jigsaw. So it was a power tool. Yeah. So I would try and take that to a tennis tournament at Indian Wells in California <laughs> and, and working on some pros. And they'd say, get out of here. That, what yeah. is that thing? It's too noisy. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So it was really tough for several years to have people listen to me enough to get it on their body. But once they felt it, it was like game over. It just, Mm -hmm. you can't unknow this. So it just started to grow in this sort of organic way. 
what a, a funny story is I, I wasn't focused on athletes. Although I worked on athletes, I thought the path was going to be through physios and chiros and other body workers that, that were sort of the evangelists for this type of product. So at the same time, I was working at a, at a gym in Hollywood called Unbreakable Performance where a lot of celebrities and a lot of big name people was going. And I had an office there. So I was working on these guys at the same time just to cool them down or get them stretched and ready to go work out or something. And then working on injuries. Well, these guys would steal my Theraguns. They'd take oh. them upstairs on the gym floor. Uh-huh. And I would, I'd be so frustrated. Like, what are you doing? And I'd, I'd literally go up. I mean, uh, Bobby Wagner, who plays for the Seattle Seahawks, is one of the guys who's there. And he's friends and investor now. But uh-huh. I gave him, I was like, Bobby, what are you doing? You don't know how to use this. Uh-huh. So I was, I was super critical about his understanding of the body because I thought it was for us. Mm-hmm. Well, the light bulb came on like the third time that happened. I'm like, wait a minute. So I said, you guys want to buy one of these? And they're like, yeah, how much are they? <laughs> and they just pulled out cash. And I thought, oh my gosh, I was going the wrong direction. Yeah. So I, it, it came to me like, I'm going to do what Under Armour and Gatorade did. I want to get into the hands of these athletes, yeah. create a story and some buzz. And then I'll come back around to the everyday person because then it'll make a little more sense. You have some more science behind it. So that, that's, that's kind of the early adopters was honestly, you know, I had Army Hammer, who was uh, an actor at the time. I worked with uh, that was really loved it. Chuck Liddell, who was a fighter at the time. Bobby Wagner, who's in Seattle. So oh, wow, Chuck Liddell, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty amazing. So we're excited. We, so how do I bring horses into this? You have a 15-minute presentation um, that you're going to do with Nick of the Therapody on um, – Percussion therapy, I guess that's the theme, and recovery yeah. for the equestrian. So what are you guys going to yeah. do together? What's what's going to be fun? Yeah, so, I mean, um, you know, obviously, you know, our, our shared passion for the equestrian sports um, and for recovery is, is, is beyond, right? So we, we, we you know, the, the opportunity that we have with Equitana to be able to showcase certain um, certain uh, um, areas of our sport that aren't really focused on or that aren't showcased, um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a huge opportunity. And I think for Jason um, and, and his company and for my passion for the company and for recovery, you know, we really just want to showcase that and, and really uh, let people know and understand, you know, how important it is to recover um, in, in, a, in the sports. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah, so we I, are, I, go I ahead. also on top of that really quick, yeah. um, to be on stage with someone like Nick, yeah. who is the top of his game in that world and have that voice. It's, it's, I can't tell you how it feels to be able to do that, but then also to be able to show up for him. Like I've done this for a long time and I don't know that there's, um, someone that has more knowledge about this than I do. And to be able to apply that to an athlete at Nick's level and share that with the group, like that's what I'm really excited about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I, and I feel the same way, Jason. I mean, it is, it is truly an honor to, to be able to, you know, with your experience and what you've done and everything that you've done for the company and what you've been through to be able to share that on the stage um, and, and, to, and, and to have your support is, is undeniably like, you know, one of the greatest feelings so yeah. you know and, and and jason has such an amazing team of people that work that work with him and that you know get things done and it's just it's been a great experience and i know we're going to do a lot of great stuff we're, we're definitely going to be the the trailblazers when it comes to this in um in Denver. Yeah. Yeehaw. okay Amen. And yeehaw, I want you, right. yeehaw. So I want you guys to come visit us too when you guys are out in the LA side. I know that um, sometimes you guys are going to get back out here because so many of Dr. Jason's clients are out here. So you have an open be, invitation. Be, be careful what you wish for. Oh, I, I'm not, I, I don't do that lightly. I'll be there next <laughs> week. <laughs> okay. No, no, you got to be at Equitana. I, I, also, so, I, also, I also wanted to share another thing, and Jason, that is that Debbie and Monty, um, as you are already at know are again some of the most incredible people to work with and also share a passion that is un it's uncomparable to anybody else and uh, what they've done for horses and three questions sports in general so you know 
being able to uh, share this with you guys and, and and to have us on has been it's been amazing. So thank you. Thank you. We we love our relationship, and I think you're doing amazing things for Polo. But lucky people going to Equitana. So tell us where you guys are going to be. Dr. Jason, first, are you going to be in some booth, or how do people find you? Go to your website. Yeah, what do they do. Yeah, go to therabody.com. Um, okay. My Instagram is Dr. Jason Worsland. But we're what I'm excited about is we're actually sharing a booth with Nick's booth, uh, Little Dan Lifestyle. And, the, you know, hopefully we get some people coming to, to have a conversation and just see how we integrate this into taking care of Nick's body. Okay, great. Oh, I'm so glad. And Nick, so you've got a booth there and you're in yeah, I mean, your see. ecosphere. People got to be pulled I mean, in your vortex that you have. Yeah, we're, we're, I mean, the, 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 the fact that we're sharing a booth with Therabody is the most, is the coolest thing in the world, right? So um thank you jason for giving us that opportunity but also i'm launching my brand world dan lifestyles um which is a lifestyle brand that 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 really embodies you know wellness and passion and four generations of of polo and history so um you know it's it's i'm going to be launching a a, 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 it's a small clothing line but a small little apparel line um that i'm that i've been working on really hard with, with natasha and um, so we, we got a lot of great things happening, but to be able to share this on the Equitana platform is, is going to be exciting. So we're going to be able to you know, bring some people into the booth and, and, and explain to them and educate them on Therabody and the recovery and importance. So we had a lot going on. You sure do. You sure do. So I want to have Nick uh, in the next segment here, give us a little bit of a breakdown of what he's going to be doing at Equitana. So um, I will say goodbye right now to Dr. Jason and uh, Therabody, and we will have in the show notes how to reach you and what your website's all about and um, the and the Equitana uh, schedule. Nick Roldan, our polo player extraordinaire. I wanted you to tell us a little bit about the the events that you'll be heading up. I know there's a 60-minute polo masterclass. Tell us about that. Yeah, so it's uh, all the events from, from the 1st to the 3rd of October, um, and we are really, I'm going to be hosting a masterclass. I'll be hosting a 15-minute segment uh, with Better Body, I'm also going to be doing a, a, a 45-minute segment with Techno Gym, which is another brand that I've been working with that I'm extremely passionate about. Um, they're a high-end um, gym equipment brand, um, and they're also a wellness company, and uh, they do a, a bunch of incredible stuff. And uh, anyways, we've we've been building, um, we, Natasha and I have been building a, a, a relationship with them and a partnership Um and uh, so we're really excited to sort of launch the, the, the training aspect of the sport. And so Equitana has given us a 45-minute segment where I'm going to work with uh, one of Technogen's head trainers, a guy named Marty Miller. And um, so Marty is going to be up there with me, and we're just going to kind of go through the, the motions of, of, of what is the perfect polo training um, formula, right? So Yeah, um, right. I love so that. So here yeah. you are. You're at an airport. Bless your heart. You're on on with us heading I'm, to Equitana. Unexpected, very unexpected. No, very it's cool. It's very cool. Yeah. No, no, it's very cool. Here he's on the road, on the road to better horsemanship and, and Equitana so that people can see it. I love that you're using so many OTTBs these days in the sport of polo. Tell us a little bit about always. where you source those. Yeah, thank you. Always. I've always loved OTTBs. Um, you know, any, any any support that I can do, it's, I mean, it's, it's basically giving, you know, ex racehorses a second a second chance and a second career. And I think they're, you know, they're extremely talented horses. And, um, and I think there's, you know, there's just so, there, there's so many opportunities to, to take, to get, take a lot of these ex racehorses into, into the, um, into our sport and train them and give them a, a second career. So, um, so people going to see a little, the, it will, your polo, your ma- master class that you're, you're giving a 60 minute, Polo Masterclass at Equitana. So, will you talk about OTTBs? Oh, we should say that's yes, off the yes. track thoroughbreds for those. Yeah, off um, the track thoroughbreds. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we'll 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 talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about the sport itself. About you know this the the swing the swing that you know the the the, um, the the more technical stuff of, of how the how you you know how to swing the mallet correctly and the different swing styles and so we'll I'll we'll go through a you know what, however much I can in an hour. Um, yeah. There's to, a lot, to get, I know. To, to, to make sure people leave feeling like they understand the sport a lot more. 
I love it. You're such an ambassador for the sport too. And it is it's oh, becoming, it's becoming a, such a fun sport. Watch out. It's addictive. Yeah. Um, so, and, and I understand you're going to answer the question of how many horses does it take Nick to play in a, in a typical game? So I mean, look, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a big number. It's usually between 10 and 12 horses to compete at the, at the top level. So, yeah. um, you know, and, and, and each one of these horses is finely tuned by the formula one car. Um, so again, you know, there's so many complexities to the sport and I'm going to share it all. And, and I want people to really understand that the, the, how uh, difficult and how um, high demanding the sport can be, but how fun it is too. So, yeah, exactly. And you're going to do a polo taster for kids. So parents um, yep. are listening to this or kids listen up. So, cause what age were you when you won your first major competition? I was 15 years old. Listen to that. 15, 15 years old. So, oh, you know, I started riding when I was three and, you know, got my first opportunity when I was professional at the age of 14. And at 15, I won, um, I guess, historically the biggest tournament in the United States. So, uh, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's been a whirlwind in, in, in so many good ways. And, you That's know, true. Yeah, um, you're still young. It's, Goodness. Yeah. And it's, you know, nice. with the polos. Yeah. So, anyways. Okay. So, now what is a e wheels like i went to this polo match just a couple of months i know a couple of weeks ago actually it wasn't that long ago and uh and all the kids came out um during one of the checkers i think that after the checker, they were on e wheels tell me what's that yeah so e wheels are these, is this new they're kind of like segways but a one wheel segways one and wheel. the kids have been using them like crazy are um, they practicing polo, polo? Are, yeah are they yeah. are they learning well, at, their at, yeah? at full speed at full oh. speed, like the sort of the hand-eye coordination that these young kids are going to have, um, because they do it all day and they never get tired. So I don't know if we're going to have very very fit kids, but we're definitely going to have kids with extreme talent. How fun! How fun! Yeah. Okay, so I know so. fitness. We've got mentoring. You've got kids. You've got master class. You are a busy boy for three days at Equitana. That's crazy. I'm going to be a very busy boy, but I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. It's going to be it's it's, it's going to be amazing. So we're right. really looking forward to it and, and my team and, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that have helped me get this going. Um, and, uh, you know, one being Natasha who has been, you know, spearheading a lot of this and she's put a ton of hard work and, and, um, and a girl named Cheryl. So we, I have a great team of, of behind me that are have really been facilitating this. And so we're, we're excited to be launching. Hi, I'm Monty Roberts. And I'm coming to you now to talk about the Monty Roberts Online University. You know, there ought to be six months in everybody's life where they just live with their animals. I've been staying home. But three months now, I've been home with this virus thing. And the things I'm learning, we're bringing you a new series. What Horses See, How Horses See, and About Horses Seeing Things. The online university is bringing you the last three years of my learning process, which I promise you is the learningest years I ever spent. The Monty Roberts Online University. Uh, you won't miss a minute of it if you get started on it. I love bringing it to you, and it's my shot to take my concepts to the next generation. Louise Butcher is founder and director of Horse Ultra Sports Kit, and that was built on a dream to innovate and challenge the status quo, as well as a love for horses and the desire to help improve their well-being. She's been riding since she was three and always had a love for horses. Well, welcome, Louise of Husk. That's a Hello. wonderful name. Tell us, Louise Butcher, what that name stands for. It stands for Horse Ultra Sports Kit. I love it. And you have beautiful, beautiful products, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But first, I want to know your horsey girl side. And um, and I was reading a little bit about on your, your website. You, people should see your website. It's just beautiful. And I love a horsey girl who has a nice website. It's kind of hard to find, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> you should go there. But I know that you grew up just outside of London. And I, yeah. I'm curious. I mean, just outside of London's pretty city-like. So how were you drawn to horses? Um... Well, 
that is a good question that my parents still ask to this day. Um, <laughs> I think it was probably from a former life. Um, I think my probably the closest that I ever had to horses in terms of my family would be my grand, my dad, my my mother's side. So my my mother's side of the family are from Devon, which is where we live now. Um, so he was he used to he used to deliver the milk um, in Devon with a horse. And, Lovely. um, <laughs> yes, yeah, it was really quaint. Yeah. And, um, so he loved his, he loved his cart horse that he used to, um, he used to take around the villages with the milk, but he also, he had experiences with horses. So his sister moved out to Canada, um, quite early on in their life. And she actually, she actually married, um, a rancher. And so she had a ranch. So he used to go out and ride the horses out there as well. So they had, so he did, he had a real interest in horses, but, absolutely nobody else did um so yeah <laughs> so I was born and I had um apparently an imaginary friend called cowboy Aww. and that was pretty much um that was that was my I used to canter around the back garden on imaginary horses thinking that I was in a giant I don't know ranch or something so yeah I, that can that's the only link that I I had with horses. Okay. Um, so so, so DNA yeah. is still my answer. I I, I swear think it's, it's just in the DNA. DNA. It's just in the blood. Yeah, I just, it's in the yeah, blood. I think it's just former former lives. I think probably. I <laughs> but he <don't>. helped. <laughs> he helped. Okay, so he passed it he along helped. somehow. But he tell me somehow. about a little chestnut pony called Woody. <laughs> so Woody. Um, I, so we lived in a, in a, in a, but like, like, as you say, just outside of London, but there was a farm, uh, which is really unusual, uh, which funny enough is still going now, as far as I understand, near where I used to live. And I used to wander down there as a, as a child and walk down the tracks and everything and on my imaginary horses with cowboy. And, um, and they had a pony there, a little chestnut pony called Woody. And, um, Anyway, I was telling a friend of mine at school about this pony called Woody, to which point she told me that she she was the owner of Woody and that I was more than welcome to go and play with Woody at any time. So obviously took her up on her offer yeah. and uh, went to the farm one day and put a head collar on Woody and started playing with Woody in the field only to find out that Woody did not belong to this young girl at all. Oh. And the farmer was... <laughs> was absolutely shocked to find me running around with this little pony um but the funny part of the story is is that about gosh maybe 10 years later I I had I had my first horse and I had him at a yard and lo and behold three stables down at the livery yard was a chestnut pony called Woody and it was it was Woody (laughs) it It really was still him it really it really was Woody yes (laughs) <laughs> so he came back in my life so yeah Woody bless yeah. him I can picture him now <laughs> right yeah that's what we are those horses that we have as youth and and I think those are the first ones that introduce us to how it feels to be with a horse no words yeah. it's just it's just that fascination that that's it horse. yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely you said something about um partnering with horses you're you're just such a mm-hmm. great horse girl and I love when horse girls make businesses out of it if you can. But dad's 86 yeah. now and, and he feels mm-hmm. best when he is in the saddle and, and on mm-hmm. a horse and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and a horse that chooses to partner with him. So in other words, yeah. they, they know intuitively what's going on with each other. Yeah. You yeah. said, you said something important, I think once that said um, mm-hmm. that horses see it as a challenge to be free and mm-hmm. um, humans mentally and physically feel like it's a challenge to control horses, but but, right. You know, and I, I love that you see horses as seeing it as their challenge to help us humans understand. (laughs) Um, Do you think that is a synergistic feeling? Like when somebody feels freer on a horse, um, is that synergistic with how horses feel about wanting to be, um, you know, not controlled? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I could I could put it down to uh, one of my horses I have right now who feels exactly that way. That any fence is definitely something that is something to tackle as opposed to something to respect. So, yeah, I think horses are always looking 
um, to be free. That's 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 their that's their thing. I mean, when you see all the children's programs and everything with the horses, they're always galloping across kind of large plains of land, and mm-hmm. all the children kind of. You know, I, I see my little girl now. There's a there's a cartoon called Spirits. I don't know if you've seen it, but yes, yes. Um, and she just and the music and this girl is kind of galloping on this on this horse with no tack on at all, just her on this horse. And my daughter's kind of in in absolute awe of of that feeling of freedom and i yeah i I do genuinely believe that that that's what horses do i mean not just physically free but i think they also free the mind as well um because we're all a bit trapped in there aren't we as humans so um yeah they i i think yeah i mean whether they see that as their challenge to help us i don't know um (laughs) i'm sure they're very curious as to why on earth we behave the way we do Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) sometimes understand why it's the way it is but you know (laughs) yeah but they're pretty generous that way so what i what i loved about that theme in your life is that you said that you were consciously choosing to make products that minimize a horse's restriction um yeah still protecting them, still helping mm-hmm. them boots, et cetera. But, um, but that helps us be safer as well. Tell us a little bit about yeah. that. Um, well, I think like I said to you earlier, I just, I was, I'm just amazed and always have been about the terminology that's been used in the horse world from the world, you know, from words as, as, as obviously as you with Monty know about the words, words like breaking a horse in and mm-hmm. all these very kind of brutal words along with bridling and, you know, and then you hear with particularly with 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 some you know some disciplines, it's, it's very much about controlling the horse, you know, anchoring the energy, and and all this kind of stuff. Um, and and I, I and I just I just um, I find that it, it's it you need to flow. You know, energy needs to flow. Everything needs to flow like a river, I guess, to be healthy. Mm-hmm. And and so for horses. If, if we're going to be constantly trying to control that energy and contain it, then we wonder why horses get so sick and why, you know, horses nowadays, I mean, there's just more, there's more and more sickness that I see in horses yeah. on a day to day basis from physically to mentally. Um, and a lot of it, I think is because of, is because of our behavior around them. Um, and so, yeah, from my perspective, I just, you know, there are obviously, there is a connection between horse and rider and there and horses I believe very much enjoy the whole riding experience as much as a human does you know like I I don't know about a lot of people but I know my horses I mean my my horse here yesterday literally put her head in 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 her bridle to be ridden do you know what I mean like she's yeah I want to go I want to go riding let's do something so they do really enjoy it they yeah and and I think they genuinely enjoy it but it's a case of um, and you need, therefore, you need equipment to to kind of make that experience comfortable for both horse and rider, so you can enjoy the experience together. But I do feel that, yeah, maybe some of the equipment is designed more for the rider's fear of the horse as opposed to facilitating that freedom. You know, so oh, that was what I, I wanted that. to do. I love that, Louise. So airflow, minimal yeah. restrictions. So everything yeah. is made. In- uh, in your product line for Husk, um, yeah. with that, with that, um, in mind. And I, and I love that yeah. that's fair for the horse. How do people find out about you? How, where can they find your products? Um, so we have a website, the husk.co.uk, uh, and we ship, we ship worldwide. Um, okay. and we do have some retailers as well across, across the world, not too many, but we're just in the process now of, we've actually, had quite a large amount of growth over the last couple of years so we're now looking at distribution and and so on so that kind of helps the the whole process um so that will be kind of in hand and obviously we can update you when when we know but we do we have the website and it's all there um i love it and we just yeah yeah yeah, we've got contact us and that it's still quite a small family business that goes directly to me or or a member of my family so we're still very much involved as you guys are. So, yeah, um, exactly. Family business. business. So, yep. yeah, exactly. Hundred yeah. percent passionate, just like you too. <laughs> yeah. and, exactly. and so people should go to uh, thehusk.co.uk. Yeah, that's so you right. Do the CEO. Thank you so much, Louise Butcher of Husk, for joining us on Horsemanship Radio. Leave this world a better place than mine. The magic in. 
Welcome back, Ann Lindbergh, with your tip for us. Thank you very much. I got one great tip, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm 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 not guilty of the whole thing because my dear mentor, Monty Roberts, um, gave me uh, an eye opener. And this is, you know, back in 1998, I think. Uh, but I do, I, you know, I just figured out a tip that people really don't think about. And I always bring this out. This is the beginning of my book, actually. Ah. Monty Roberts say that the horse has a language. And we call the language of the horse, right? Or the language mm-hmm. of echoes is what we say. Right. And, and we talk about the four signs. But I've never heard a writing teacher say, now the horse got it because now we got the four signs. Mm. Did you know that every time we lead a horse from, you know, point one to point B, the horse mm-hmm. will give you four signs. And when you ride, he will give you four signs. I think that everybody that's been riding in a riding school or for a riding teacher, they have heard the riding teacher say, now you can, um, how do you say it in English? Now you can take the reins. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, how do they know when to take the reins? Mm-hmm. Well, that's very easy because first of all, the horse will walk around and look a little here and a little there and you're chatting along with your riding teacher. And then all of a sudden the ears will start to, you know, come to you one each at a time. And then one of the ear will lock on to the riding teacher. And then when you're sitting there and you don't think about it, but you start to move your hands around the reins, then it, it's like the horse is trying to pull the reins out of your hands. No, they're not. They're actually dropping their head. And uh-huh. then they start to, as the riding teacher say, chewing on the bit. But what they do is lick and chew. So uh-huh. they've actually given you the four signs. That's and I great. have never heard a riding teacher say that. And I promise you, before 2020, every riding teacher, at least in Sweden, will say that. Good girl. That's a good I tip. like that. Yeah, that is a great tip. It's an interpretation. Yeah, I I love that because we are always talking about what does join up look like in the saddle and what does join up look like for the rest of the horse's life. That's a great interpretation. Love that, Anne. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have you back when that book comes out. We want to hear more. Absolutely. Uh, I have to do it in English as well, you know. Uh, Yes, please. Yes, (laughs) and thanks to you, I have... You know, not only do I know a lot about horses, well, that's thanks to your father. That's to Monty. Uh, uh, but thanks to you, I know a lot about Internet and what you can you do with ebooks and everything. You are doing ah. a super job, Debbie. I'm so proud of you. Uh, and I'm, I'm extremely privileged to be a part of this. Thank you so much, Anne. Thanks so Thank much you. for being a part of the show, too. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? Yeah. Where in the world is Monty Roberts? Monty is looking forward to meeting some new friends, two-legged and four-legged. In October, now, it's uh, 4 through 21 is the advanced course. It's our second in a row, three weeks long, October 4 through 21. You have to be invited, so that means get started in your introductory course of horsemanship, which we will have on November. November 8 through 19 is the introductory course of horsemanship in Monty's Concepts and Methods. And then that, after that, you'll... You'll look for the exam so you can get to that advanced course when it comes around again. December 10 through 12, we'll have our um, last Horses in Healing for the year. And there are new dates that were being introduced for 2022. So watch our website for the new dates. That's right. And the website is MontyRoberts.com, where you can find all things Monty Roberts, all things Language of Equus, all things uh, Monty Mm -hmm. Roberts University, and all things podcast, because this podcast is also at MontyRoberts.com. So it's all there. In one it's place. all there. In Thank you. Place. You can go old school. You can call Flag is Up Farms at 805-688-6288 and get all of the information you desire. Mm. And for details about today's show, you can go to HorsemanshipRadio.com where you're going to find links, photos, and more information about today's guests and topics. We love your feedback and a great way... To give us feedback is on social media. Monty's Facebook page is Monty Roberts, the one with the little blue check mark, and his Twitter and Instagram handle is Monty underscore Roberts. 
Mm -hmm. And many thanks to our sponsors, too. That is Hands-On Gloves. Those are the most amazing grooming tools on the earth. We love them. And also MontyRobertsUniversity.com. And that's where we teach you all Monty's tips and tricks and theories and concepts and how he changes them all the time to be fairer to the horse. Be sure to visit the other great shows, too, on the Horsemanship Radio at horseradionetwork.com. Until next time, have many happy horse hours.